Hi, good day everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you here once again in our online Sunday celebration message. You know, our topic for this uh, morning or probably afternoon, uh, dun sa place na kung saan naroon kayo ngayon, is uh, a very timely message. Alam niyo po, just to testify, uh, after getting this message that we are about to uh, preach uh, this day, only to find out that there are some pastors uh, around the world having the same message. Okay, Stephen Fortick has the same message of, as that of this message. And uh, one of my friends, uh, only to find out, has also the same message. And it is also the message of Joseph Prince. And uh, I just want you to sit back, relax, and be expectant because we believe in this season of lockdown, in this season of uh, quarantine, we really need, we badly need this message. But before that, I invite everybody to just bow down your heads and close our eyes. And why do we just come to God with a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you gave, that you gathered us together once again to just receive the very message that you are about to, to convey to our midst. Oh God, Lord, we choose to yield our hearts to your instruction, direction, and correction, Father, Lord. May we truly realize that there is no substitute for your holy presence, O oh God. And in your presence, there is peace. In your presence, there is joy. Lord, may we fully understand the true meaning of rest. Father, we thank you. Be thou glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Magandang umaga sa inyo mga tagapakinig. Thank you for continually supporting this uh, YouTube channel. And by the way, again, like what I said a while ago, it's gonna be a timely message for all of us since we are all experiencing uh, uh, the same predicament. Okay? Naturally or uh, usually, I'm going to give you a three powerful questions, once again, that, uh, you know, demand three powerful answers. So number one, my question is this, are you stressed out? You know, when you are stressed, let me tell you this, stress is a killer. Ako po, I'm actually teaching memory, and lucky kung sinasabi that the best friend of memory is actually sleep, but the number one enemy of memory is actually stress. Why? Be because whenever you are stressed, 
when you, whenever you are tense, there's a stress hormone that goes with your bloodstream and it impairs your long-term memory. Okay, let's face it. Marami tayong kinakaharap na stress nowadays. Andyan tayo, meron tayong tinatawag ng mental stress. You know why? Because we are trapped by the overthinking of how are we going to solve all our bills. Electric bill, water bill, uh, internet bill, everything. Pati yung mga renta and all, all the days, ano, itong mga nakaraang araw, we keep on thinking paano ba natin masasettle lahat ng ating mga bills. So, at the end of the day, uh, we, we came to the point of having that mental stress. Another, yung iba sa inyo, probably you are experiencing an emotional stress na talagang uh, hindi, hindi mo alam kung papaano mo i-handle itong emotion na ito. Yung, yung, yung relationship mo sa family mo, probably yung relationship mo sa boss mo. And this is a natural uh, predicament, natural challenges na na-experience natin araw-araw. You're so stressed out emotionally, you're so stressed out um, mentally, or probably yung ilan sa inyo gusto nang mag-resign sa trabaho because you're so stressed physically. And right now, having this timely message, napakahalagang marinig mo, ito pala yung meaning ng rest. So, I have another question for all of you. Are you confused? Probably you're not just stressed out, probably you are confused. Confused of what will happen tomorrow, as if tomorrow will always come. Sabi nga ng Bible, uh, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Mga magulang, mga kapatid, the future is in God's hands. Sabi ko nga nung, sabi nga doon sa nakaraan nating preaching, the Lord who knows you best, loves you best. Alam niya kung ano yung best para sa'yo, at alam niya yung anong bagay yung magti-fit, not just to your wants, but also to your needs. So, nakukonfuse ka ba? Probably your, 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 your future is uncertain. Lord, uh, ito pa ba yung mga bagay na kakaharapin ko in the future? Makakatapos pa ba ako sa pag-aaral? Uh, magkakaroon pa kaya ako ng partner in life? And those things uh, led you to a more stressful uh, life. And probably itong topic na pag-uusapan natin ngayon, ito yung ilan sa mga sagot na dapat mong makonsider in our day-to-day -day living. Andyan tayo. Another question is this. Are you disappointed? Are you trapped by unfulfilled expectations? Yung tipong ito yung ina-expect mo 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. But as you go with this journey, your life journey, you found out na napakaraming mga hurdles, napakaraming mga bagay na dapat kang kaharapin at para bang sa tingin mo parang hindi yata matutuloy. And by having that overthinking, I have, uh, I, I came to this conclusion, probably, or maybe, you need to get some rest. Andyan po tayo sa so pag-uusapan natin, ano ba yung kahalagahan ng rest? Okay, tayo ba ay magkakaroon ng rest? Or all the rest of our lives, okay? We will have that so-called wrestling. Sabi nga nila, okay, you do your best, and God will do the rest. But one thing I know, you do your rest. And God will do the best. Mamaya, mas malala, may unawaan nyo kung ano yung ibig sabihin ko nito. So, let me tell you this. Our topic for this day, thank you because uh, uh, you find this uh, time uh, important. You find, you find this time ano, uh, very significant. Ano, may, marami kang mga bagay na pinalampas. Marami kang bagay na dapat gawin for this day. But you chose to come to your uh, uh, your computer, go to your YouTube, and watch this video. So our topic for this morning, buti na lang narinig mo, buti na lang nagkaroon ka ng intensyong puntahan, is this. Rest. What? Rest is holy. And right now, maiintindihan natin, maridefine sa atin, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng rest? And another thing, we will also come to the point of having the redefinition of the word holy. But before that, let's talk about what happened during the creation. Okay, let's go, let's go to the Bible. If you, if you brought your Bibles with you, I would like you to open with me to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. And it says here, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, when on the seventh day God had finished the work He had been doing. So on the seventh day, when on the seventh day, He rested from all His work. 
So makikita natin, sabi doon, on the seventh day, God rested. At malalaman natin, napagod ba ang Lord after niyang mag-create? Or there is a far different meaning na talagang ikinukunbe itong passage na ito para sa bawat isa sa atin. Let's continue. Okay, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 3, Then God blessed the seventh day. Remember, number 7 is the number of completion. And it says here, Then God blessed the seventh day, and what? Made it holy. Because on it, He rested from all the work of creating that He had done. Okay, masasabi sabi dito, God made it holy because on it, He rested. Let's go first to the word holy. And as we all know, the word holy came from the Greek word hagios, which means separated. Separated for what? Separated for sacred use. The word holy has the same, uh, you know, Greek word as that of the word sanctified, hagios. At yung salitang hallowed sa prayer na our Lord's prayer is actually hagiazo. It means to separate. It means to set apart. Kaya kung sinasabi ni, ni, ni Apostle Paul na he was separated for, for the gospel, it means he was set apart. He was made holy for such assignment. Kaya sabi ko nga in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, sabi doon, I knew you. Ito ang sabi ng Lord kay Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. And I set you apart. Mga magulang, mga kapatid, kung nakinig kayo ng message natin na who's your boss, and after you acknowledge the, the Lordship of Jesus, He being your master, He being your owner, He being your controller, and then you, will, you, will, you would realize that God wanted you to be holy. God wanted you to set apart. God wanted you to be separated for sacred use. God wanted you to, to be set apart for a special assignment that God wanted you to do. Ayan tayo. And right now, there is a day within a week that God wanted you to set apart. There is a day within a week or a time within a day that God wanted you to set apart, to separate. Why? For sacred use. Kaya nga mapapansin natin, meron tinatawag na holiday. In fact, ang ibig sabihin pala talaga nito, ang original uh, na pinanggalingan pala nito, yung salitang Holy Day. Now, gusto ko po kayong tanong, tanongin, throughout the week, meron po ba tayong tinatawag na Holy Day? Meron ba tayong tinatawag na holiday? God, on the seventh day, He made it holy. Why? Because on the seventh day, He rested. But, okay, wait a minute. Meron po akong tanong sa bawat isa sa inyo. Did God experience tardiness? Nakaranas ba ang Diyos ng kapaguran? Napagod ba ang Diyos na after He created everything from first day to the to sixth day, after He He mentioned the word, Oh, it was good. It was very good. On the seventh day, napagod si God. Then He rested. Ibig bang sabihin nito, the very reason why God rested, simply be because He got tired after the creation. But I want you to take note of this. This time, we will have a redefine, a new meaning of the word resting. Mga magulang, mga kapatid, I want you to get this. Resting is beholding. Kahit po sa mga musical score, kahit po dun sa mga orchestra, kahit dun sa, sa pag-aaral ng mga kanta, meron po sila dun tinatawag na rest. And when you are resting, you are, you are regaining breath. Ano, muli kang kumukuha ng hininga para makanta mo uli yung mga kanta. But this time, I want you to see what was the meaning of the word rest when God rested on the seventh day and made it holy. Resting is beholding. Let me give you a clear illustration for you to understand of what does it mean resting is beholding. I want you to picture out, I want you to use your creative, sanctified imagination, okay, to, to, to picture out right now a certain painter, okay? A certain, a certain painter, okay, habang nagpipinta siya, nandun yung mga sketches, Nakaredo yung mga pintura na kanyang gagamitin. Everything is ready. At habang nagpipaint siya, there will come a time na yung mga painter, may mga times siya na they will stop, they will just move back, 
and look at the painting that they are doing. Okay? In the same way, when God, okay, blessed the seventh day, made it holy, and rested, it goes beyond having the, the mindset of God being tired. What God did on the seventh day that He made holy is this. He beheld His creation. And I personally believe the creation was the reflection of the Creator. At pag nakakita tayo ng mga creation, mga obra maestra, mga work of art, mga masterpiece, our natural response or natural expression is this. Wow! When, when we beheld the glory of something, when, when we reflected, when we see the reflection of the glory of the Creator to the creation, we blurted out the word, Wow! And I personally believe when God saw His creation, it goes beyond just saying, Oh, it's good. It's very good. I, I personally believe that God had that expression, okay, coming from deep within. And as He beheld His creation, He was, you know, wow, it's, nakita niya yung glory ng kanyang creation. Ulitin ko mga magulang mga kapatid. Resting is beholding. Alam niyo kung bakit minsan napapagod tayo? Because we keep on working and working without considering the significance of rest. Okay? Our mindset is this. I will do my best and God will do the rest. Where in fact, ang gusto lang pala ng Lord na gawin mo is to do your rest because He wants to do what is best. And this time, ito yung maintindihan. Let's go back to the illustration of the painter. Again, yung isang painter, pag nagpipaint po siya, not all throughout, magpipaint siya from start to finish, na nandun lang siya sa kanyang canvas. There will come a time that he will move back and behold his painting. In the same way, when God rested, it means he beheld his creation. Why? Because his creation is the reflection of His glory. Now, I want you to see this. This is a, this is a, a painting you probably saw in the internet or probably over the YouTube. And in this painting, you can see the details. Nga, pag tinignan nyo, buhay na buhay yung painting. You see the intricacies of this painting. Kitang-kita nyo na parang may tatanong nyo, painting ba talaga ito? Or picture. By the way, this painting was actually painted by, I think, a Russian woman, okay, Akiana Kramarik. And when you go to your YouTube channel, marami daw sa painting ni Akiana Kramarik was actually personally downloaded from the revelation of God to her. In other words, taken from the source, taken from the Abba, and then yung kanyang bagay na nareceive kay God, Ipi-flash out lang niya by, okay, by doing her painting. And right now, I want you to take note of this. It's one thing for you to do something out of pressure. And it's another thing for you to do something out of pleasure. And I personally believe the very reason why God placed that passion in your heart, because that passion, that potential are all connected to your purpose. Meron mang pagkakataon sa light mo na kapag ginagawa mo yung isang bagay, you are relentless, you are unstoppable, parang wala kang kapaguran. Because you're so passionate in doing such a thing. And passion in doing something is actually doing something out of pleasure, not out of pressure. When God created the heavens and the earth and everything around, it's actually out of His pleasure. And giving the kingdom is actually also the pleasure of God. It is our Father's pleasure to give us the kingdom. Everything having that excellence is an expression of the kingdom of God. I want you to see this. Look at Akiana, okay, doing her painting. Siguro ma mapapansin natin may mga times sa parang ah, pag ginagawa niya itong painting, wala siyang kapaguran. She's so relentless. She's so uh, unstoppable. 
At probably kung makikita nyo rin tong painting na to, ganito rin yung ginagawa ni Akian. Halos wala siyang kapaguran. Because parang parang kakambal na ng hininga niya yung kanyang ginagawa. It's it's actually her being manifested in her doing. Bahagi na niya yung kanyang ginagawa. And I personally believe habang nagpipaint si Akiana, there will come a time that she will just stop and behold her painting. Why? Because I personally believe, kahit po kayo nararamdaman nyo yun na when you did something, when you accomplished something, when you finished something, and you know and you know you are having a great part of creating this, of making this, there's a joy unspeakable welling up from within I, as if you want to blurt out the word, wow! This is, this is the reflection of who I am. Again, get it? Resting is beholding. Minsan kapag nakikita mo yung full expression of your being at na-flash out mo yung bagay na yun at nakita mo yung excellence, yung glory ng bagay ng ginawa mo, then you will just say, wow! Then you, feel, then you will feel rested. This is resting. Masaya siya. Makita niyo yung picture dito ni Akya na nakangiti lang siya katabi yung kanyang creation, yung kanyang painting. Again, this is resting. Andyan tayo. Again, let me reiterate. Resting is beholding. So at this point in time, okay, as we redefine the meaning of resting, this time we will go to some uh, okay, wrong concept or misconception about rest. Okay? Minsan may mga trials, may mga challenges, may mga personal uh, suffering kang pinagdadaanan, and there is something that you are doing. You are doing diversion. Andyan tayo. So you are doing a lot of things to make you happy. At sinasabi mo, pastor or coach or uh, sir, mom, I'm doing this because I just want to be happy. But before we move further, let me redefine to you the meaning of the word happy. Maraming mag-asawa, maraming mga couples, whenever they introduce themselves, they introduce themselves something like this. We are happily married. At napaka-rare, napaka-seldom po yata na marinig natin na merong mga mag-asawa na sinasabing we are joyfully married. Mga, mga kapatid, iba po yung happy, iba po yung joy. The word happy came from the word, okay, ha, has the same root as that of the word happening. That's why if something happened to them, then they are happy. If nothing happened to them, then they are sad. In other words, yung kanilang happiness can only be dictated by things that are external. Something happened, then you are happy. Pero yung joy, kahit anong mangyari sa'yo, masaya ka pa rin. That's why Jesus on his way going to Calvary sabi doon, for in okay, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. At kung meron mang nilolong si David when he prayed to God, Lord, restore unto me what the joy of my salvation. Iba yung happy, iba yung joy. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, the joy of the Lord is our strength. When you have that joy, you feel rested. At ito na nga po yung ating ginagawa kapag meron tayong mga nararanasang mga challenges, mga predicament, we do the word diversion. Okay, naalala, naalala nyo po ba pag sinabing diversion, lumiko ka lang sa kanan, pero yung problema mo na dun, na dun sa kaliwa. At ang pinakamalungkot na pwedeng mangyari, na dun pala sa dulo, mamit mo uli yung dati mong challenges, yung dati mong problems. That's why it's one thing for you to have diversion, Okay, it's another thing for you to have, recreation. Now, one of the wrong concepts of the word resting is this. Resting is not doing nothing. That's our old, long-term, long-time definition of the word rest. Okay, the definition of rest for you is not doing anything. But do you know the real meaning of rest? Rest is enjoying what you are doing. And I personally believe si Akiana Kramadik kung bakit ganun yung expression 
or bakit ganon yung yung outcome ng kanyang painting simply because she enjoyed what she was doing mga magulang mga kapatid kung yung ating mga ginagawa is just bound by have to's ought to's need to must It's one thing for you to do something because you have to. It's another thing for you to do something because you love to. And I want you to take note of this. Resting is something that you are doing out of pleasure, not out of pressure. Again, resting is not doing anything. Okay, again, resting, yung ating old definition of this is not doing anything. But the real meaning of resting is this. Resting First is beholding. Second, resting is enjoying what you are doing. Let me tell you this. Rest gives you peace. Rest gives you shalom. Remember the Bible told us that the shalom of God that transcends, that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus our Lord. Huwag niyong kalilimutan yung peace is actually a guard. Ito yung nagbabantay sa puso natin at sa isip natin. Kaya when we do something not according to the shalom of God, you feel unrested, probably that thing is not the will of God for your life. Let's talk about the story of Mary. And as we all know, in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, Jesus went to the house of Martha and Mary. And Martha, as we all know, probably it's their tradition, kahit naman mga Pinoy, ginagawa natin to, na pag meron tayong bisita, probably yung pinakamagandang tinggan, pinakamagandang kubiertos, ito yung ating nilalabas. Why? Because we were bound by pleasing people around. Ayaw natin may masabi. So we are doing, we are giving our best service. Service deluxe. Tinangka lang agaw, nagwalis, nilinis. Why? Because ayaw natin may masabi yung bisita. So we cannot blame Martha for doing such a thing. But ang sabi ni Jesus, but Martha, you, you are so upset with many things. At marami sa atin, we are so upset with a lot of things. Pero may mga bagay lang palang hinihingi sa iyo yung Prince of Peace. May mga bagay lang palang hinihingi sa iyo si Jesus. At ang sabi doon, Mary chose what is better. By the way, Mary chose what was better. Okay, and I did not say, now what Martha did is not good. Mar what Martha did was good. But what Mary chose was better. And what Mary did is not to be upset. She just sat at the feet of Jesus. Now, I want you to take note of this. What gave Martha an unrest? Okay, ano yung bagay na nagbigay kay Martha ng pagiging upset? If you are going to read that passage in Luke chapter 10, you will notice na itong si Martha. Yes, masipag siya. Yes, nakaka-amaze yung ginawa niya. Kaya lang, meron siyang bagay na nagbibigay ng pagod sa sarili niya. Hinahanap niya yung sarili niya sa iba. Many of us here, probably, you are tired because you are trapped by the so-called perfectionism. I got this from the book of Bill Johnson when he said once that perfectionism is a cruel counterfeit of excellence led by the religious spirit. In other words, many times we keep on doing something. We, we try to perfect everything around. But at the end of the day, we got tired, napapagod tayo, and we even came to the point of blaming, finger pointing, fault finding. That what happened to Martha, the very reason why she was upset, hinahanap niya yung sarili niya sa iba. I want you to take note of this. God was not looking for a performance. He was looking for a pure romance. Yung having love relationship with him. Ito ang hinahanap ng Diyos. And this is what Mary found. Not a performance, but a pure romance. Lord, sa'yo lang ako. Lord, gusto ko lang makarinig yung boses mo ngayon. And in this time of lockdown season, in this time of quarantine, we don't need to be upset by a lot of things. Probably God was inviting us to be like Mary, to choose what is better. And that is to sit 
at the feet of Jesus and allow yourself to be led by Him. Allow Him to, to, to give you the correction, the instruction, and the direction. Alam nyo, nung bata pa po ako, one of the songs that we are singing is this. In His presence, there is peace. In His presence, there is joy. Let me linger. Let me stay in your presence day by day till your likeness will be seen in me. Mga magulang, mga kapatid, I want you to get the lyric of this song. In His presence, there is peace. In His presence, there is joy. Peace, joy, righteousness. That's the kingdom of God. And Mary chose what is better? At ang sabi po ng Biblia, that thing that she, sho- that she chose will never be taken away from her. At this point of the lockdown season, at this point that you are so stressed out, at this point that you are in the place of uh, being so confused and disappointed, choose what Mary chose, which is better, which is, cannot be taken away from her choose the presence of God. Why? Because there is no substitute for the presence of God. Take time. Take time to meet your lover. Take time to meet your source, the Abba, in the secret place. And I want you to take note of this. Sabi nga nila, sabi nga ni, ni Heidi Baker, intimacy destroys the works of the enemy and I want you to take note of this when you have that intimacy you will know the God who knows you best and the God who knows you best loves you best another thing identity gives you authority but intimacy gives you power and I believe this season that we are being confronted by you know lots of uh, you know uncertain uh, situations we need to be intimate we need to reconnect to the source god may your strength be my strength this point in time lord may your lord i want to manifest the mind of christ this season again resting is beholding is start to behold. You know, listen very carefully. Sabi nga nila, it's from being to doing. Your, 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 your beholding will lead you to believing. And believing will lead you to becoming. And your becoming will lead you to behaving. Beholding, believing, becoming, behaving. And the more we are exposed to the presence of God, the more God changes our perspective, the more God changes our lenses. Let me tell you this. Peace is a weapon. Remember one of the names of the son that was given in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. It's not just wonderful counselor, all uh, mighty God, everlasting father, but one of the names of this son that was given is a prince of peace. And I want you to take note of this. Peace is a weapon. Sabi nga ng Romans 16 verse 19, no? chapter 16 verse 19, the God of peace, not the God of war, the God of peace, will soon crush Satan underneath our feet. Merong mga adversary of our souls, merong mga bagay na para bang, alam mo, something that, you know, paralyzes your thinking, paralyzes your decision. But the shalom of God that guards your heart, that transcends and surpasses all understanding, will guard your thinking, will guard your mind and your heart through Christ Jesus our Lord. Make every effort, according to Hebrew chapter 4 verse 11, make every effort to enter into His rest. Lahat po tayo may mga bagay na gustong mangyari sa buhay natin. May mga lugar tayo or mga kinalalagyan na gusto nating marating. 
And many of us will be saying, I, 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 I reach this where I am right now because of my sacrifice. And I like that. I admire that. And I want to be like that. But it's one thing to get something because of your sacrifice. But it's another thing to have something because we believe in His sacrifice. Iba yung nakarating ka sa taas dahil dumaan ka sa hagdan. Iba yung dumating ka sa taas dahil sumakay ka sa escalator. The first illustration I gave is the picture of earned favor. Okay? But the second illustration is actually the picture of an earned favor. Meron ka lang sinakyan, pero kung nakarating ka dun sa bagay na nais ng Diyos sa'yo. At mamaya, ito yung pag-uusapan natin. Another thing, resting is beholding, resting is enjoying, resting is believing. Mga kapatid, ulitin ko po. Beholding, believing, becoming, behaving. At ito lang ang sasabihin ko sa bawat isa sa inyo, yes, it's reality. You cannot forgive. But the greater reality is this. God has forgiven you. And believing in what Jesus did for all of us is actually resting. Ito yung binabanggit sa Hebrew chapter 4, that you enter into my rest. Hindi yung gawa mo, kundi yung gawa niya. Hindi yung sakripisyo mo, kundi yung sakripisyo niya. You are blessed not because you are good. I did not tell that you stop doing good. You are blessed not because you are good. You are blessed simply because God is good. Our obedience does not make as love or unlove. Our obedience is actually a response to that goodness, to that love that we are experiencing. Lord, I cannot afford not to obey, not to follow you because your goodness is so irresistible. Lord, hindi ko po kayang hindi sumunod sa'yo. The moment na naunawaan kong napakabuti mo. Again, it's one thing for you to follow God because you have to, you need to, you must, you should. But it's not another thing for, for you to follow God because you love to, you desire to, you long for. Anjan po tayo. Resting is beholding. Resting is enjoying. Resting is believing. Believing in what? Resting is actually anchoring everything in the finished work of the cross. This is the illustration I mentioned a while ago. Iba yung nakarating ka sa taas dahil dumaan ka sa hagdan out of your effort, out of your strength, out of your sweat, out of all the performance, out of your effort to do everything para makarating doon. Iba yung sumakay ka sa escalator. Na even though you are not doing anything, nagulat ka na lang, grabe, bakit nandito na ako? Dahil meron kang sinakyan. And that is resting. Not performance, but pure romance. It's the gift of your lover. Ano yung sinakyan mo? The finished work. I was just reminded of one of the quotations posted by my pastor. And I was almost, you know, fell from my seat when I read that over the projector screen. Kasi ang nakasulat po doon ay ganito. The finished work is the foundation of our identity. Kaya nga lagi ko pong sinasabi kung tayo may may pabor, kung tayo man ay may mga bagay na tinatanggap may not because of your work, but because of His work. And realizing the goodness of God, realizing the kindness of God, that love became a compelling force. It's, it's actually compelling. It's, it's the very thing that compelled you to do what you are doing right now. Lord, everything that I'm doing is just a response. Because you see the goodness of your lover. Resting is beholding. Resting is enjoying. Resting is believing. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, if I may request all my listeners right now, kung ikay napapagod, 
kung meron kang pinagdadaanan you came to the point of like what I said I keep on saying you keep up to the uh, you came to the point of banging your head against the wall this thing will stop your blaming this thing will stop your finger pointing this thing will stop your fault finding hey in Asia chapter 30 verse 15 in repentance in a radical change of mind about the character of God in repentance and rest is your salvation but in quietness and trust is your strength I want to take I want you to take note of this trusting is believing resting is believing resting means trusting and right now before I end this message I know this is very short I know I hover down I nail down I want to go to your context I want to go to your situation right now a while ago or a week ago or several days ago I listened to one of my one of the preachings of my pastor and I was in uh, should I say jubilation I was so uh, I was in great uh, joy seeing or hearing his preaching about Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 when Jesus was inviting come to me all of you who are weary and heavily laden those who are tired and heavily laden and I will give you rest Yes, before anything else, let me just tell you the context. During that time, they were experiencing political oppression. Why? Because of the Roman government imposing heavy burden, heavy tax burden upon the Jewish people. So they were not just experiencing political oppression, they were also experiencing religious oppression. But this time, it's actually the imposition of the law, rules, and regulations. In other words, kung baga kung, kung gagamitin niyo yung inyong imagination, yung mga tao doon parang may daladala silang, ang tawag namin dito sa probinsya, Balagwet, na may dalawang balde. Yung isang balde, yung tax, the political oppression, yung isang balde, yun yung religious oppression. In other words, they were so burdened, they were so tired, they were so heavily laden. And sad to say, itong verse kasi na to naririnig lang natin kapag mayroong patay at, at ililibig na siya papunta doon sa simenteryo. And he said, cast your burden upon me, those who are heavily laden. But this time, I want you to get this. Jesus said, come. When Jesus said, come, as if he's inviting you, get out from where you are and go to the place where I am. When Jesus said, I first heard the word come, when he, when he commanded or when he commanded Peter, John, James, and he said, come, and I will make you be shares of men. As if, kung titignan natin, it's an invitation for a new identity. Dati kayong fisherman, umalis kayo dyan sa inyong kinalalagyan. Hindi niya sinabing huwag na kayong mangisda. But, hindi na yan ang identity nyo ngayon. I'm inviting you to a new identity. Not just a fisherman, but to be the fishers of men. And this time, Jesus has another invitation. Come to me. Not to anyone else, but to Jesus, you who are burden those who are heavily laden those who are tired what did jesus promise and i will give you rest and this is what he said take my yoke upon you and learn from me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light mga magulang mga kapatid the yoke of law is so heavy and easy but God wanted to offer to us the yoke of His grace, which is easy and is light. The very thing that Jesus wanted you to receive is He Himself. Ako ang tanggapin nyo, hindi ang reliyon. At sabi niya doon, learn from me. Alam niyo po ba ang nakalagay sa the message translation? Learn the unforced rhythms of grace but in this translation it just goes something like this learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and what did Jesus say 
and you will find the rest for your soul. Let me give you another illustration before I end. Maaring sa buhay nyo, marami na po kayong sinubukan. Lumabas na yung husay natin, lumabas na yung galing natin, lahat ng pinag-aralan natin. Because for you, according to my effort, according to my ability, according to my talent, I can do it on my own. And one time, nagtanong po ako sa isang kongregasyon habang nagpipreach ako. And I said to them, imagine yourself, you are an Olympic swimmer. And I place you inside the Olympic-sized swimming pool. Then I ask them, can you save yourself? Of course, being an expert Olympic swimmer, you can definitely save yourself because you're just in the swimming pool. Ito yung, ito yung natural environment mo all throughout. Ano, sa maraming part ng buhay mo, lagi mo kasama ang swimming pool. And being an Olympic swimmer na mahusay, na magaling, na maraming alam sa paglangoy, definitely inside the swimming pool, you can save yourself. But this time, being an Olympic expert swimmer, and I'm going to place you in the, you know, raging, yung talagang nagwawalang mga alon sa gitna ng Pacific Ocean. Probably you can save yourself by, you know, kaya mo mag-float, kaya mo mag-backstroke, mag-freestyle, mag, you know, butterfly. Lahat ng galing mo at husay, kaya mo gawin sa gitna ng malalaking alon sa Pacific Ocean. But let's, let's face it. There will come a time, even though you're an expert, you have that title of Olympian or Olympic swimmer, there will come a time that you will say, hindi ko na kaya. Nakakapagod ko mang pahin. At dito sa mga bagay na pinagdadaanan natin, you are doing so much effort, performance, this is what I learned, this is what I read, this is what you know, I, I got from the conference, seminar, everything. But you will come to the point na pagod na pala ako. Now, I want you to picture out right now those people outside the ark. Hindi natin alam kung sinong maalam lumangoy, sinong hindi maalam lumangoy, but definitely kahit maaram pa silang lumangoy, they will come a time mapapagod sila. At kung sino, maalam man silang lumangoy, da, darating ang time, sisigaw, sisigaw sila, no, wabuksan mo yung ark! Lahat ng nasa labas ng ark, they need to take effort to get out from their situation para makawala. Because they thought yung kanilang pagkampay doon sa lugar na yon outside the ark, wala nang magmamatter na husay. Wala nang magmamatter na galing. Kahit anong galing mo pang lumangoy, there will come a time na mapapagod ka. But those people inside the ark, they are all safe. They don't need to exert an effort. They, need to do, they don't need to do a, a beautiful performance inside. They just rested inside. Mga kapatid, those people outside represents, okay, represent those people who are having a total allegiance to the law with regards to their personal righteousness. They keep on trying, they have the simple sin, sin management, they, are, they have the behavioral modification all their lives. They want everything in their lives to be perfect. But sometimes when, 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 when they did something perfectly imperfect, they blame themselves, they blame others, they find fault, they finger point others. They are not acknowledging that mistake that they did wrongly. But I want you to take note of this. Many of you are tired of perfectionism. Many of you are tired of, you know, pleasing other people around, bound by the expectation of many. Many of you are tired of performance. But Jesus was inviting us to just enter into His rest. Hindi mo kailangan ikampay dito ka sa loob ng ark. And that ark is the picture of grace. And I want you to take note of this. Iba yung nakarating ka sa taas. Na dumaan ka sa hagdan. 
iba yung nakarating ka sa taas dahil meron kang sinakyan na escalator na you are in the position of press then ito mismo ang nagdala sa'yo doon remember this the only work that works is the finish work and at this point in time gusto ko kayong tanungin gusto ko kayong bigyan ng hamon meron ba sa inyo dito you came to the point of doing your best even doon sa mga pinagdadaanan nyo meron ba kayong personal na mga uh, sakit, karamdaman nilapitan nyo na lahat ng espesyalist sa lahat ng doktor or meron kayong mga bagay na gustong solusyonan sa buhay nyo nagamit nyo ng lahat ng dunong nyo ng alam nyo and at the end of the day sinasabi nyo kapatid pagod na ako rest is beholding beholding who God is because that beholding will lead you to believing rest is believing believing will lead you to becoming at this point in time I would like to invite every one of you who are listening to me right now I don't know who you are I don't know from where you are I don't know what circumstances challenges predicament that you are having right now probably you have a relationship problem to your family or to someone else probably you have financial problems things you need to settle at sinasabi mong pagod na ako but this time gusto kitang imbitahan in a very short prayer let's why do we just come to god with a short word of prayer father we thank you because you made us realize that resting is beholding. And in that beholding, we will be led to believing. And eventually, that believing will lead us to becoming. At this point in time of our challenges, at this point in time of our predicaments, Lord, I pray, may we not rely on our strength, our effort, our performance, our ability, everything that we can do but everything that what you can do for we believe the only work that works is the finished work and this time we are anchoring everything to the finished work of the cross lord we want to behold you lord we want to enjoy the things that na meron sa lifetime and we want to to be led to that resting as believing oh god Lord, at this point in time, I pray for those people listening to me right now. Extend your mighty hand. Touch them. Impart to them your love. Let them experience the power of grace. The empowering grace. And I even pray that may just, Lord, these people will understand not just the meaning of grace, which is you giving to them why, what they don't deserve. And let them understand that mercy is with, withholding something that they deserve. Lord, we deserve to be punished. We deserve to be judged what you opted to give, us, to, to give us mercy. Lord, we don't deserve blessings. We don't deserve such favor. But you, Lord, you chose to give us that favor. Lord, thank you for making us realize that you gave us grace, that you are good, and your mercy endures forever, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God in repentance and in our rest is your salvation in quietness in our trust there we will get our strength Lord. we thank you in jesus name amen and amen and amen